Hello and welcome. Hi, I'm Dave. Memoization, that is to memoize a function, is to ask the function to remember the result. If the function gets the same input again, it will quickly deliver the same result without needing to recalculate the input. Memoization is not just a JavaScript concept, it's a programming concept that applies to many programming languages. It could easily be an interview question topic. React also has two different memoization methods, and understanding this concept will help you understand both both of those methods better when you're working in React. Memoization is typically applied to functions that demand intensive processing. It can also be applied to API requests in certain situations, but that is not ideal. Where memoization really helps is when it is applied to recursive functions, and recursive functions are already processing intensive by nature. As a best practice, memoization should only be added to pure functions. That is, given the same inputs, a pure function should always provide the same output. Memoization also comes at a cost. You're trading memory for speed. Let's look at some examples. Okay, I've got Visual Studio Code here on the left. On the right, I have the Chrome DevTools console from the Chrome browser. And in Visual Studio Code, I've added an event listener to the document. We're listening for the DOM content loaded event. And when the DOM is loaded, we call the init app function. And that's right up here. It doesn't have anything in it yet, but that's kind of what we would do with a vanilla JavaScript web app. So to demonstrate memoization, I'm first just going to paste in a very simple function. So we see multiply by 10 here. It's passed a number. Whatever number is received as a parameter is multiplied by 10. And the result is returned. So what I want to demonstrate with this function, and I'll need to log to the console the results, we'll say console.log, we'll call the function, and I'm going to go ahead and pass in the number 10 as well. And now I'm going to copy this line down a couple of times and save, and we see 100 three times in the console. What I'm demonstrating is even though it calculated the result the first time, it had to recalculate the second time, and it had to recalculate the third time. Now this is a very simple function, but imagine if this was a process intensive function and it took a while to calculate. This would be very inefficient. It's already calculated the result. Well, that's where memoization comes in. So now let's create a memoized multiply by 10, and I'll do that right underneath here. So we'll say const memoized multiply by 10 and now inside the first thing we're going to do is create a closure and that's what we'll store our cache that's where we want to keep the results after we've calculated them after that and if you're familiar with closure already you'll know what I'm going to do if not you'll want to watch my tutorial on closures but here I'm going to return an anonymous function and this is what receives the number parameter and now inside of this anonymous function I'll scroll up to give us a little more room we're going to check our cache so we'll say if the num that's received as a parameter is in the cache then we're just going to retrieve that result from our cache. So I'm going to log the cache to the console here just so we know that's what we're doing as we walk through this. And then we return the cache and of course we refer to the key which will be the number received as the parameter. And of course keys are stored as strings but we can refer to it this way. Now we don't really need an else here because that's a return. So if the number's in the cache, it's going to return there and the function will be done. If not, it will just come down here anyway and we'll define the result. And here we'll go ahead and calculate. If this has never been called with the parameter passed in, it will need to calculate it before it can store the result in the cache, which is essentially memoizing the answer so it can refer to it quickly next time. And then that's exactly what we'll do. After we calculate the result, we'll store that result. So cache with the num as the key here is going to be equal to the result. And then of course we need to return the result. And that pretty much sums it up. Now when we call this into action, it will be just a little different than you might expect. So instead of calling multiply by 10 and passing in the number right away, what we need to do up above is say const multiply by 10 is equal to 
our memoized multiply by 10 and call that. And that's because our memoized multi multiply by 10 will return this anonymous function. And then we're able to call this function with our multiply by 10 and pass in the parameter, whichever number we want, which we have right here. But the bonus is with the closure, this anonymous function can refer to what's ever stored in this private cache. It's only available because of the scope here of this function through a closure. Once again, if you're not familiar with closures, check the link in the description below. But we can refer to the cache and we can call it with multiply by 10. So we're going to do that three times. And let's look at the result now when I save. We get the calculated result first. And then the second time, we are logging the cache to the console. And you can see the key here is 10, which is the parameter we passed in. And here's the result. And then, of course, it provides the result right away. And then we called it a third time. And the same thing happens because the result is stored in the cache. Now, if I copy this down again, but change the number, and I'll say I'll pass in the number five and save, you can see the cache is not logged because it had to calculate this result. It didn't already have that in the cache. But if we do it one more time and I save, now you see our cache and it has the result for five and the result for 10. So it could refer to that and deliver it immediately. Now again, these are not intensive functions here, but imagine if the processing time did take a while, the second time around, it would be instantaneous. And that's the benefit of memoization. Now, let's look at how we can apply this without creating a separate function like this every time. We can actually create a decorator function that will memoize any other function we pass into it. Okay, I'm going to make some room here and we'll create our new function that is a decorator that will memoize other functions. So let's call this memoize and then we'll accept a function as a parameter because that's what decorator functions do. And if you haven't watched my tutorial on decorator functions, I'll make sure to link to that below as well. Now what we do is create a cache. And this cache is set equal to an empty object. And now if you are thinking about closure, that's exactly what I'm going to create here because I am going to return a function and it receives the arguments. This is a rest parameter, by the way, and so these are just however many parameters are passed in, or we refer to them as args. I could rename this params if I wanted to, and it just ends up being an array of the parameters. So now we're returning this anonymous function, and by doing that, this creates a closure, and the cache is available to this anonymous function through the lexical scope. And so we will access the cache. And it's kind of a private variable here as well because of that. And that's how a closure works. And again, more of that is in my closures tutorial as well. So we're returning this anonymous function. And the first thing we need to do is say if the args, which is this array of parameters that are passed in, or arguments, if you will, and we'll say to string because we're going to refer to the key in the object and the key is typically stored as a string if the key here defined by the args set to a string is in our storage cache then we'll return our answer just by referencing the cache so i'm going to log the cache to the console so we know we're accessing the cache when this happens and then I'm going to return the cache and then we'll reference the key in the cache object by args dot to string. There we go. And now we don't need an else here because this is a return. So if this is true, we're going to return right here. But if it's not true, it'll skip all of this and it will just come down here. And then we'll go ahead and call the function. So we'll set our result equal to the function and pass in the args, which are the parameters. And then we'll take the cache and once again refer to that key by args.toString. And then we'll set that equal to the result. So now after we've calculated the 
uh, function here, whatever it is supposed to do, whichever function we've passed in, after we've got the result, we store that in the cache. And that's why it won't take any time at all to look it up the next time. And then we'll just return the result here. So there's our complete memoize function that accepts another function and adds the memoize functionality to that. So now let's apply this to a couple of functions. Okay, I'll scroll back up. Now we've already worked with multiply by 10, so let's do something different. It only accepts the one parameter as well. And our memoize decorator function will accept more than one parameter. That's why we have this array of arguments. So here you can see I've pasted in a function called add three, and it has three parameters. And then I've pasted in a function called add many. And actually, I'm putting the args in an array here, but I could just say args because it is already an array. So quick correction there. And now up here, let's go ahead and apply are memoized to these functions. So first, we'll just change this out and we'll get the same result, but we'll say, let's see, memoized malt by 10. Let's call it that. And then let's call over here, memoize, and we'll go ahead and pass in our multiply by 10. And now with our memoized malt by 10, I'll select all of these and replace. And now we'll save, and we should have the same result in the console that we had before, but we're doing this a little differently. Now we're using our memoize decorator function, passing in our original function, which gives us a memoized version. So now let's go ahead and try this with add three. So I'll copy add three. I'll pass it in here and I'll take this memoized malt by 10 and I'll just select all of them and we'll call this memoized add three. So we need three different parameters here. So I'll say one and two and I probably just should have selected all when I did that. But here we go. Pass that in. Now here we'll go four and three and once again four and three and save. And now we can see a different result because we're calling a different function, but it works with all the parameters. And here's what I really want to point out is that the key in our cache has all three numbers in it. It's 10 comma one comma two, just like we passed in. So we're using all the parameters. And then when we go ahead and call the function with different parameters, notice it's got a second key in here that's five comma four comma three. And it's giving the result, of course, of those parameters added together with add three. Now let's go ahead and do this with add many, and you can see it accepts args, then it uses reduce to add all of those arguments together. So now we'll take that and switch it to add many, and here, go ahead and select the three because that's all we need to replace. Oh, I had a three in one of the parameters, so we'll need to change that. But let's go ahead and select the three that have this, and we'll say one, two, three, four, five. And now I can't select these at the same time, but we'll say six, seven, eight, nine, need a comma there, 10, and I'll just paste it in again here. And now we'll go ahead and save, and we'll see the results of our add many. So the first time, that memoized add many is called with one, two, three, four, five. It calculates 15. The next time it gets it from the cache and there's our key, one, two, three, four, five. And the next time it gets it from the cache again. Now, when we call memoized add many with six, seven, eight, nine, ten, it calculates it and gets 40. The next time it looks to the cache and you can see our second key in here was six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and there's the result 40 and it instantly has it. Now, before we finish, I'd like to go ahead and apply this to one processing intensive function. And there's no better way to do that than with recursion and at least give example of it. And we'll get the classic example here of Fibonacci. So I'm going to replace all these functions we have here and paste in a typical Fibonacci function that's going to give us the, uh, Fibonacci number that's in the sequence at whatever position we pass in. So I'll pass, pass in a higher number and it'll of course take longer to calculate because with recursion, 
which I also have a tutorial on and I will link to below. It calls itself. So fib is calling fib here and fib here in the function. So you get some intensive processing there compared to just your typical function. So what we want to do is memoize that. So let's change this now to memoize fib and then we'll go ahead and select add mini here. And I'll come down and just change that to memoized fib. Now we just want to pass in one number. And I think if we pass in the number 40, it's definitely going to take our processing, at least on my computer, it will take it a little bit to get that number. So let's see what happens now if we save and how long it takes to get each number. Well, it took just a little bit, but after we got the first one, right away it was there in the cache each time. So if we went ahead and compared this, let's go ahead and comment this out. And now let's just call fib three times and look at the difference. So I'll say console.log fib pass in 40, and I'll put that in there three times. Let's see how long it takes now. And we're waiting on the first one. Now we've got the first one, now we're waiting again. There's the second, and now we finally got the third. Now in comparison, let me comment these out, and let's go back to how we originally did this, and save, waiting on the first one, and now we've got all three, because the other two are delivered instantly from the cache. And that is really the bonus of using memoize and memoization in general. It's the beauty of the whole concept is because you are trading a little bit of memory to store some answers that may be asked for again, but at the same time, the processing speed really decreases because we can refer to the cache to get those answers anytime they're requested again, given the same parameters. So do remember that it should really be applied to pure functions. That is the same input always gives the same output. Now I mentioned in the beginning you could apply it to an API but you really want to think about the situation for that. Maybe that's okay for sports statistics or something historical that will never change but if you're requesting the current weather that's going to change and that might not be a good thing to apply memoization to. Now also you are trading off memory for speed. So you don't want to stick anything really large in this cache. You just want to stick some basic answers. If you have large amounts of data, there are other ways to store that. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection. And a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you. And thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.